Hey everyone, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now it's been quite a while but today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 18922. This is one of many Windows 10 20H1 builds that have been released in the Insider Preview but it's the first 20H1 build that we're doing a video one because up until now there's basically been nothing in it so far and that's a real shame but that changes today and the reason um, it, progress has been so slow on 20H1 is because it has a much longer development time which means the initial sort of beginning phase of development for 20H1 has been sort of under the hood changes and whatnot. But in this build, there are some notable new changes. Some of them aren't officially in the build yet. They are hidden, but we'll show you them today anyway, because there's been nothing uh, exciting for a long time. So, so let's dive in. Some of the changes we're going to look at today weren't introduced in this build. They were introduced in a few builds prior. But again, like I said, since we haven't done a video before, we might as well take a look at them all together today. So diving in, the pen workspace here has a new UI. If we click on it, it the whole sort of here, here's screen sketch and here's all the other things that you used to be able to do. That's all gone. It's now been simplified to whiteboard, full screen snip and settings. If we click on settings, that gives us this little drop down menu which allows you to learn more about pen or pen settings in the settings app. And this is just the normal pen and ink area that's been available in Windows 10 since forever. Now, if we go back in here, you'll see that there's the whiteboard option is an actual app that you have to download from the Microsoft Store and it will do that for you through here. You won't even open the Microsoft Store. It'll just do it automatically. That'll take hopefully just a few seconds. Or maybe not, maybe it would take longer than a few seconds. Is this actually going to download or is it just pretending? Oh no, it is downloading. Okay. Yeah, so it's downloading a 68 megabyte app. But once that's installed, you'll see that if I click on that button again, that now takes me to the Microsoft Whiteboard app that I just installed. If we accept that, we can get started and that will allow us to use the Microsoft Whiteboard app. So why they link it to Whiteboard and not OneNote, for example, I don't know. But hey, there you go. We're now inking in the Microsoft Whiteboard app with all of the Whiteboard apps capabilities. In fact, this app's changed quite a lot since I last played with it. It's quite nice now. Oh, I'm going to add sticky notes. How exciting. But yes, that's the Microsoft Whiteboard app available on Windows 10 in the Microsoft Store. Moving right along, the next noteworthy change is something that they've actually pulled from the 20H1 builds, but I'll show you a sort of image of it. They're updating the, the File Explorer search UI to sort of tap into Microsoft Search, I believe. I think they're calling it Windows Search. Either way, it's a sort of updated search thing, and it looks kind of nice, and there's a screenshot of it. Like I said, it was in the build briefly, but then they pulled it for reasons unknown. If we jump into settings here, moving on to settings, there's always a settings segment. Uh, language setting improvements. So we go to time and language, go to language here. You'll see that there's now sort of redesigned languages area where you can change the Windows display language and all sorts of things, which is quite nice. Now let's jump into task manager real quick. If we go to performance here, you'll see that the disk is now labeled as what it is. So in this case on this device, it's an SSD, but if you have hard drives plugged in, you'll see HDD there instead. And that's just a kind of small update, which now sort of describes what the drive is you're using, which is very nice indeed. There's also a couple of new options in the start menu apps list here. At the top, there's now a new group called start typing to search, and that gives you quick access to apps, web and documents. Now, I don't know if this is just an experiment that they're going to just pull at some point because it is kind of lazily put into the start menu. I think they could do a much better job with this, but hey, here's how it's implemented in this build and it's OK. If I click on one here, it'll just take me to the dedicated search UI where I can now begin searching for that specific category. And um, that's how that works. And uh, the Xbox Game Bar, which this isn't specific to 20H1, uh, but it's a huge enough update that I haven't shown on video before that I might as well take a quick look at it here. But the Game Bar is no longer a bar, but more an overlay UI, which is quite extravagant. So if we try to launch it, there we go. You'll see here it has like different menus and windows and stuff. And it's really quite incredible. You can add different shortcuts and whatnot. If we go to here, sorry even has its own Spotify sort of UI, which allows you to play and pause music on the go. You can add uh, looking for groups. You can also add, I believe, party, Xbox social, fantastic. And that's basically that for the Xbox UI. It's very, very, um, it's different. It's not a bar, although there is a bar up here. It's not really a bar anymore. It should be called the Xbox dashboard because that's what it's called on the consoles. 
All right, now moving on to the things that aren't technically enabled in this build, but we've just sort of enabled them through third-party programs. These will show up officially at some point in the near future. The first of which is the ability to rename virtual desktops. So if we click on a new desktop here and double click the name, you can now rename it to, you know, what I want to call this. I totally closed it accidentally. Let's call it productivity and didn't work because it's not supposed to be enabled, but you will soon be able to name these virtual desktops. If you're a user of virtual desktops, I know not many people use it, but for those power users who do, you can now name your virtual desktops. So you could have one for productivity, one for gaming, one for research, one for music, etc., 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 which is quite nice. And now, finally, the biggest sort of hidden feature that isn't enabled yet but is coming soon is a brand new Cortana experience. Now, this is a big deal. And if we click on the sort of circle down here for Cortana, you will now get this brand new UI, which is catered to a desktop. So you can now begin typing into the Cortana experience. So, hey there. And with any chance, Cortana will respond in a sort of conversational thread, just like on iOS and Android. And just as if you were talking to a friend or colleague, it's now a sort of threaded conversation. So I can say, what's the weather like? And she can respond with, hey, here's the current weather. And of course, since it is a virtual assistant, you can still use your voice to do so. If we come up to the triple dot menu here, you'll see there's an option for settings, which just takes you to the Cortana notebook. As per usual, you can get access to your list, reminders, suggested tasks, even skill settings and sort of device access and whatnot. So that's pretty nice as well. But yes, this is the new Cortana experience and it's a uh, pretty good. If you click on something in here, it will take you to your web browser of choice. So in this case, Microsoft Edge. And the split does mean you can no longer use the search bar for Cortana um, commands. So if I say, uh, tell me a joke, that will no longer in bring up Cortana, that will just search the web instead. And that's because the Cortana experience is now a dedicated app built into Windows 10 that you can get to. And your conversational history is always remembered, so you can refer back to things if you want to, which is great if you're doing research, for example. Um, but you can also clear your conversation view if you don't want to have your history there anymore, and that will go away like that. Now, like I said, this is still um, sort of hidden from the user. It's not enabled by default in the Insider Preview Builds. This is just a sort of sneak peek at what's to come in the upcoming Insider Preview Builds, which is very exciting. If you want to enable this now, you can do so by right clicking on start, selecting run and typing ms-cortana to colon. Click OK and that will launch the new Cortana experience for you. So there you have it guys, that's a quick look at build 18922. Um, we will be doing more 20H1 build videos in the next few weeks and months as features start being implemented into the builds finally. But until then, thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.